Welcome to Dish It Out. I'm Tony Spadafora. What I love most is to get a group of people together to have some good food, tell a few stories, and have a few laughs. Because you know what? That's what makes a party. And like any good party, the heart of the party is in the kitchen. It's always where the warmth is and the fun is until, of course, it spills out onto your balcony and into your neighbor's pool and people get arrested. But I digress. We're going to have some very special guest stars come on in and share their secrets from my network of informants and thieves. I'll show you some time-saving prep tricks that are going to get you out of the mess and into your Manolos a lot faster. So, come hungry and get ready to taste a better life because we're going to dish it out. How easy is this? So today's episode is called Squash in Time. I got three easy recipes that are gonna make you look like that rock chef. A starter, a side, and an entree. We have this fantastic baba ganoush, a nice whimsical play on a Middle Eastern spread. We have some cannabini, which is a nice little take that Ma created. A mix of ratatouille and some cannellini beans. And then spaghetti squash as an entree. That's that intimidating football in the corner of your grocer's produce section. Let's get cooking. The great part about these recipes, the majority of the product is already found in your pantry. I'm going to show you what every good chef should have in store for making rock star recipes. It's a little section we call Pantry Raid. What we're going to use, oregano, sage, red pepper, rosemary, tomatoes, and white beans. Fresh from Pantry Raid, we're back with our ingredients. And of course, now the star of our recipe, Baba Ganache. Notice the eggplant. Consider the eggplant. What this is is also known as a guinea squash. When you're in the market and you're looking at one of these, make sure the skin is nice, taut, and purple. It's purple and shiny, a lot like something Prince would wear. What we've got for ingredients today, we have a dozen fresh cloves of garlic cut into spears. We have a teaspoon crushed red pepper. We have two teaspoons of dried rosemary. And we have two tablespoons of some fresh lemon juice. Always remember, fresh beats concentrate. That's how I got through the seventh grade. Right here, what we're going to do is separate the egg from the plant, the men from the boys. Mm. This is wicked easy and mildly therapeutic. Now this is going to roast the garlic really nicely and it won't burn. What flavor? Yum yum. Yum yum yum. The baba ganoush can be made while you're out making noise, making martinis. What you're going to do is put it into a preheated 375 degree oven in your baking vessel of choice. Ours is cast iron here at Dish It Out for 45 minutes, giving us a chance to start on a little squashatini. You know that intimidating little football in the corner of the grocer? That's a spaghetti squash. Not easy to cut. Make sure your knife is nice and sharp and make sure you are uber careful. Nothing ruins a dinner party like stitches and blood. Unless you're stitching up a turkey breast and serving Bloody Marys, then I think that's perfectly acceptable. What we're going to do is slice this bad boy in half. And this is the easiest thing you're ever going to prepare. It's the ultimate pasta primavera, where the vegetable is the pasta and the pasta is the vegetable. It's a regular cut-up. We're going to scrape out the center. This is going to go into your baking vessel of choice. Ours is a baking pan with about a half an inch of water. You're going to roast those spaghetti squash hollow side down, 45 minutes in a nice covered foiled pan. Your oven, of course, is still preset from 375, but it's got your baba ganache cooking. And then on the last 15 minutes, you're going to turn her over. Next up, we're going to get into our ratabini. So let's get working. All right, remember when making ratabini, a smash up of ratatouille and cannellini beans, this involves no rodents, so please leave your rats at home. What we have for our ingredients today, we have uh, four nice chopped up fresh cloves of garlic, we have two teaspoons dried oregano, and we have a teaspoon and a half dried sage. I got myself half a white onion here, and I have three nice sized zucchinis that we're gonna chop up right now. This is a wonderful recipe that my mother would do for us to use up some nice produce that was in the house. And uh, the funny part is, is that she would add the cannellini beans because it all depended upon how many uh, people's friends were coming over tonight. So uh, she was able to stretch it. It's so funny that people are so afraid about chopping an onion. They think that they're going to cry. My theory is use just enough onion to get by. Any more? Food processor. Wet it, wipe it, good night. Squash. Vessel of choice, cast iron here. 
Lipid of choice right now for this instance, olive oil. You're gonna use about a turn and a half. You got your three summer squash, zucchini, into the pan. Some salt, a little bit of crushed ground pepper, because that's gonna help bring the flavors of the zucchini up. I'm gonna bring some onion on over. Drop that in. Got four quarters chopped up nice, nice. And that's not gonna take long. So while the onions are cooking right now, um, we're gonna let them go and get a little soft. And on the pickup, we're gonna add one 28 ounce can of diced tomatoes drained. We're also gonna add a 15 ounce can of white cannellini beans rinsed and drained. But we do that on the pickup so the beans don't break down. We got our tomatoes, in they go. Yeah, that's nice. We're gonna add our dried herbs, oregano, and sage. So all the veggies are nice and tender and they're just getting a little revitalized from the tomatoes. We're gonna turn the heat down on this and let it simmer. And then on the pickup, like I said, we're gonna add the cannellini beans. Pickup by the by is the last step before you bring to the plate, which you bring to the table, which you bring to your hungry friends. Rinsed and drained, rinsed and drained. In they go. And just let this go for a little bit so that the beans start to change color. Not like Michael Jackson completely changed, but... So let this go for a little while, while everybody gets introduced. We've let this cook down. Remember we started, we put a nice brown on the zook. Tomatoes. Oh, nice. On, out of the onions, the garlic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Mm. The tomatoes filled in all those little crevices of space and taste that you were waiting for. And turning down the heat, let everybody get acquainted at the party. And you know what's great about a party? It's obviously in the heart and soul of your kitchen. Eggplants ready to go. You have your appetizer, you have your side, and you're gonna have your entree. So the vegetarians on your menu, on, I mean the vegetarians on your guest list tonight will be very happy to know. So we got this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrape the meat of this out, and this is easy as can be. Take your little fork and pull out the meat. Nice eggplant. Come to Papa. It's a beautiful color, this baba ganache. And we're going to add our finishing ingredients. We're going to add our rosemary. We're going to add our crushed red pepper. And a little fresh lemon juice. Oh, this is so tasty. So this is all mixed up with our final ingredients. Add your salt and pepper to your taste. Taste? What, if I must? A little bread. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Baba ganache, baby. Do this now. Mmm. It's Tony's Talk Time, which is our opportunity here on Dish It Out to be able to trash, recycle, and revisit anything from food to fun to fanzine. Oh, yeah, this is where lasagna meets Lindsay Lohan. But I want to talk to you a little bit today about my inspirations. I'm a very lucky man who have grown up in a wonderful family where I learned at the feet of my mother and my grandmother how important food was. Not just to nourish your family, but to bring them all together. Not just the whole gathering around and sharing of big food, sharing of time together, learning from one another, sharing those memories and those recipes. I'm fortunate enough that I was able to learn, have those memories with me, and share these recipes and times and stories with you online. This is Tony's Talk Time. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Aunties. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Next is the spaghetti squashettini. Mmm, nice. So now that the spaghetti squashettini has cooled, we're gonna dress her up with a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of salt to taste. It's nice that salt is back in fashion, isn't it? And we gotta go a little something like this. Fork, fork, fork. Oh, very nice. Use your favorite lipid of choice. Ours is butter. So we're gonna dress this up. Spaghetti squash in. Dried oregano. That's about a teaspoon. In the old days, when we were growing up, we'd have spaghetti or linguine or fettuccine hanging off from the, a string from the front door to the den because we'd be making pasta. You know, it's just a nice little thing we would do once a month because it was to get all those kids together and do it like that. My mother and father would have their heads examined. 
But uh, when I told my mother about spaghetti squash, she's like, I don't think I'll ever need that string again. I have to go through that personal hell. Mm. The oregano, salt, pepper, and I'm actually being good to myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do you feel squoze? Because that was squash in time. Baba ganache, made easy as an appetizer. Ratabini, you can feed a crowd or you can feed it as a size. And spaghetti squash, the intimidating little nut bag over in your produce section, made simple and easy as an entree. I'm Tony Spadafora. I'm dished. I'm out. This is Dish It Out, and I really appreciate you coming in today. Come back next week, and we're going to talk about Parmesan horseradish fish. What you're going to need as you establish your well-stocked pantry, mayonnaise, Worcestershire, horseradish, and Parmesan. You can use shaky cheese in this instance. Trust me, it's a great cooking method. Thank you very much, and I'm going to see you next time.